Now let's go back, of course, to one of our top stories. Former Transnet CEO Siabong Agama and four others were granted bail yesterday. They were accused of siphoning money out of Transnet. Well, Gama is alleged to have colluded with his co-accused from Trillion and Regiments. So let's discuss this now with Transport Board Chairperson Popoli Mulefe. Tata Mulefe, thank you so much for your time this morning. This story has been happening and developing since 2015 to 2019. It says a, a significant amount about how perhaps we as South Africans have turned a blind eye and were not privy uh, to the shenanigans which were actually there to loot the state of funds and state entities of funds. Now that these arrests are happening, do you think it's good enough to clean? And, and what do you say to some of these that have been arrested, including Mr. Gama himself? Well, I, I really don't have any message for them. Um, uh, safe to say that uh, uh, Mr. Gama and all of us as South Africans uh, need to account to the South African public and the taxpayer. And I do hope that uh, in responding to the charges, uh, he will take the country into confidence and uh, explain everything as to why, uh, having been given a position of trust and responsibility, that uh, they allowed uh, the shenanigans that uh, we now have to deal with uh, to happen. Um, yeah. Ndade he did deny, um, did Siabong Agama, the, of course, uh, allegations. So how much faith do you have in this particular process um, bringing out the truth of what exactly happened? <laughs> Well, uh, Morena, we, we always have to give the benefit of the doubt uh, to those who uh, are acting and those who have taken decision to prosecute and also to, to hope that uh, notwithstanding the many denials, uh, that uh, there would be probably a point where he might feel the necessity um, uh, challenged by his own conscience yeah. to to tell the truth. I know the denials, but uh, I mean, there's overwhelming evidence. Obviously, whether people get convicted or not is a function of how the NPA, the the, the police, the law enforcement agencies that discharge their responsibilities uh, in accordance with their mandate. Obviously, if they put up a shoddy case they will lose it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, what the investigations have established, both through the MNS uh, attorneys, the, the Waxman's attorneys, and the State uh, Capture Commission of uh, Chief Justice Zondo, then Acting Chief Justice, had an uh, that it, it would not derogate from the fact that uh, there's a lot of uh, evidence uh, that uh, that shows that a lot went wrong. Yeah. You know, as you're speaking about this, um, I know that it was even during conversations where you've actually admitted that uh, we found a broken organization speaking about Transnet, and we were lucky because at that stage they've already commissioned two reports to investigate maleficence in the organizations. And you also made reference to how Transnet has suffered quite a lot. In terms of being able to repair the brokenness, right, where are we in that regard? And just how broken is Transnet as a result of state capture and as a result of greed? Well, the, the damage is huge, uh, Faith. Um, look, uh, Transnet is, is battling uh, to meet uh, the demands of its customers at a time when it should be exporting huge volumes of, um, of uh, commodities, coal, uh, manganese, iron ore, chrome, um, as well as uh, uh, in the, uh, agricultural products. We are unable to do so because we don't have enough locomotives or if we do have locomotives, the contract will be entered into, into uh, in such a manner that uh, the, the suppliers also implicated 
in the shenanigans or the malfeasance that you refer to um, are refusing to provide the necessary spare parts to maintain the locomotives. The damage is huge. Um, revenues of the organization have gone down. But from the point of view of fixing it, I am proud that we have been able to put in place a solid and uh, ethical management team that's uh, very decisive and committed and focused to turning this organization around. And, and I, I'm confident that in the next few years, it will be back to what the South African public have come to expect it to be at. Mm. Dr. Malefe, do you feel that those accused right now, including the former CEO, are the only people that should be facing the music? Do you feel there are more heads that should be rolling? And to what levels do you feel the heads should be rolling? Well, there's certainly a lot of heads that should be rolling. Uh, I think clearly some of these people were discharging the mandate that came from certain quarters. That is why it's important that when they appear, and I think uh, uh, in court, they should be able to say, why did they wake up one morning and decide that uh, they needed to, to fleece the organization of its resources and to, to pilfer uh, the, 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 the coffers of uh, the country and reduce the capacity of the South African fiscus to discharge its mandate to the South African public. So there are many people whose heads must still roll mm. uh, below those who are appearing and, uh, of course, those who were uh, their masters and uh, the business partners who were there already, as you would have seen. There are people there from regiments um, and uh, there will be many more, I, I think, implicated. Yeah, uh, it certainly is uh, something that we need to be able to, to, to track quite significantly. And very quickly, before we let you go, uh, are there still individuals in Transnet that you can say still believe that they are untouchable? I, I don't think we have anything like that. Uh, I think uh, um, uh, they, they now know that uh, the whole country the South African general public and civil society, including the government, uh, can have no track anymore with individuals who have no respect uh, for the South African voters. Uh, they know that uh, the hand of the law is long. They cannot hide anywhere. Mm. And no one is too big uh, to be touched by the hand of the law. Dr. Mulefe, I know we, we did say we were going to be letting you go, but just we want to throw this one out there because I think it's an important question to ask. Do you feel that there is still an injustice done in that the Gupta family are still not here facing the music and that it's just only uh, the likes of Ndate Siabong Agama? No, I would not say that there is injustice done uh, because I am aware that the law enforcement agencies uh, through their mutual uh, justice uh, cooperation are busy with various countries working on that issue of the Guptas. I think at an appropriate time, they will deliver the results. Uh, they, there's no way they could uh, hide in. I mean, just the other day, we were, we were reading in the media the report of how the Attorney General of the U.S., New York, and various other parts of the United States, the FBI, mm. and other law enforcement agencies uh, have gone across the globe to trace uh, the, the wrongs that were done by one of the companies. Incidentally, it is the supplier of, uh, of ESCOM, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that was in the media the other day. So it's clear that through this mutual uh, legal cooperation that extends beyond the borders, uh, we should be able to deal with uh, this, these matters. It's a matter of time before us. Yeah. Uh, we we'll definitely are going to have to see how the law unfolds in this regard. Dr. Mulefe, thank you very much for your time this morning. Transit Board Chairperson Mabopo um, Mulefe just giving us the latest.